get some temperature. So our final race of this penultimate round of the championship, it's the Saimoto Minibike 140 final. This is how they will line up. Reese Stevenson on pole from Will Lathrop, Ben Lord in third, Richard Holmes Williams in fourth, Michael Med and Mick Lord taking us to sixth position, Stuart Hartman in seventh from Ryan Clark, Tom Stanford in ninth, Bobby King in tenth place, Chris Edwards and Dan Merron in twelfth place, thirteenth for Rob Overen, Mark James Cockfield in fourteenth, Ian Blatter with Tony Reveley. Darren Coleman in 17th place from Ian Stanford. And looking further down the field, Jamie Merchant, Dan Baker, Charlie Dent in 21st from Stephen Blatchford, Gary Jacobs and Max Parry in 24th place. And uh, one of few, uh, quite a few riders actually, we believe, not making the start for this final out of the 33 that started this penultimate round of the championship here at Lid. Once again, it's been a great weekend's racing here at Lid, this track. Uh, well, I was saying to Derv earlier, it's quite a long way for most riders. We really are in the southeast of the country, and uh, it almost makes you think you're on your way to France actually get that close to Dover and Folkestone. Great track here, of course, the Lidcart circuit. It's very fast, very flowing. So one or two little undulations in there just to uh, keep you on your toes as well. And for the second year in a row, we, by and large, have had some fairly decent weather. Certainly to start the day off, it was, of course, quite foggy this morning. So uh, did delay the start slightly, and then we had the, the forecast bright weather. But uh, you see that very slight mist of rain, really uh, throwing a curveball early on in the program. So uh, let's hope that stays away for the final race of the day, as we look set to be a uh, very closely fought mini bike 140 final. The likes, of course, uh, Reese Stevenson. Will Lathrop in there as well. Two of the top riders in Rich Energy, British Mini Bikes, qualifying at the front. They've been inseparable at times throughout the afternoon. At the moment, going on the afternoon's form, you would say that Reese Stevenson would be on paper perhaps the favourite to win this race, but certainly Lathrop, I think, will certainly keep him honest and look to uh, try and grab the win for himself. Of ben Lord, Richard Holmes, Williams also could be factors in this race. Just looking out of the commentary booth right now and uh, it's quite murky and cloudy in the sky. Some very heavy clouds in the sky. I was say we didn't think it was going to rain earlier, but I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bet against it in this final. Whether we get a few mists, uh, drips of rain with a little mist out there possibly, I don't know. It could potentially happen because it's looking like that at the moment. Track temperatures have gone down as well, so as we get underway for the final race today, Saimoto Mini Bike 140 final. And it's a good start for one, two, three. Lee Stevenson getting underway well. Lathrop second, Lord in third. That's Ben Lord from Richard Holmes Williams. Michael Med with a good start getting ahead of Mick Lord. Everyone seems to have got through the first two or three corners okay. Into the top hairpin they go. So Lathrop leads, and then the 2 2 6, uh, sorry, Stevenson leads, I should say, and uh, well, Lathrop's second, Lord in third. Everyone's gone away well. Into the final corner they go, and uh, Lathrop looking very quick through that chicane. Will Lathrop, of course, has been helping his younger brother Harvey out in the junior supermotos throughout the season. And much like his rival Stevenson, a rider who's got his eye on moving up the, the motorcycle racing ladder, you might say. Lathrop looking to get some uh, some good results here in 2021 to help build the momentum to next year. And uh, certainly for his sake, we hope that he can uh, get the funding or get the uh, wheels in place, you would say, to get himself a, a ride that he wants for 2022. In the meantime, though, he's certainly keeping the pressure on Reese Stevenson into the final corner. Stevenson running very well in the Talent Cup earlier this year and putting himself well to the more powerful machinery. Stevenson holding on to the lead, but Lathrop right on the rear wheel. These two just trying to break away now from the third place, which is now Richard Holmes Williams. He looks like he's got past Ben Lord. Into the top few corners they go. So Stevenson leads. And just watching the 226 of Lathrop. Oh, down the inside of Lathrop. That came out of nowhere. Great move there from Will Lathrop. And he snatches the lead 
from Rhys Stevenson who fights back. Oh, it's going to get tight through the chicane. Look at that from Rhys Stevenson. Side by side through that chicane. Very difficult part to, uh, to make an overtake throughout the afternoon. But Stevenson stuck it in there and made the move stick. This is all allowing Richard Holmes Williams to come through into third place. And he can't write off Ben Lord in fourth either. So Michael Med in fifth, Mick Lord sixth, Hardman, Clark, Stanford, and the 55. Bobby King in tenth, Dan Merrin, Chris Edwards, Rod Overend, and Mark James Cockfield a bit further behind. We've got Ian Blatchford in, Stanford, Darren Coleman, and Toby Revley just going over the line, battling in the midfield with Jamie Merchant, Stephen Blatchford, and Charlie Denton a bit further behind. As trouble there for the 737. That's uh, Darren Coleman who was in 17th place. The yellow flags come out. Now, is that just a rider error or does that indicate that the track is getting a bit greasy? Well, certainly looking at the pace of the leaders, they haven't really dropped off. And as you can see for yourself there, Reese Stevenson passed. Oh, red flags come out. The race has unfortunately been stopped. Now, I don't know if that was involved in the incident with Darren Coleman possibly. Around the back of the circuit, Coleman appeared to be. Oh, he's, this is just after the chicane on the uh, on the first corner, and Coleman picking the bike up. I can see actually. So uh, just on the first chicane, Darren Coleman, who went down, picking the bike up. We're just trying to see if there's anybody else involved in that incident, and whether there's. Oh, I don't know if there's oil on the track, possibly, or only guessing. There was just looking at the marshals who appear to be uh, taking an interest in this one. So the red flag coming out. Ostensibly for the incident involving the 17th place rider, Darren Coleman, who we saw pick up the bike and move away. But a bit of concern on that first chicane. As we say, there's no injured riders out there. But Now, whether when Coleman went down, whether he's dropped some oil, I don't know. But uh, you see the riders down here just gathering on the final corner. That's the, uh, the number 30 there of Ian Blatchford with Ian Stanford, 119. Those riders were battling for... Uh, 15th position. And there they are with uh, 164 in there as well. Uh, Tony Reveley, Jamie Merchant, Mark James Cockfield in there as well. So 737, the rider who was in 17th place, Darren Coleman, went down on the first chicane. Uh, the rider appears to be okay, but there was a bit of concern on that first chicane. I'm wondering when he, when he went down whether he's possibly dropped some oil. Now, of course, that will need to be dealt with before the racing gets back underway. It is on the racing line where he went down as well. So the rider's back on the move. I haven't seen the marshals on the track, so whether that's okay, I don't know. Is uh, We should see these riders on the final corner start the machines back up. They'll go out for another formation lap, and still quite a way to go in this race, actually, when the red flag came. I think we've got about 10 laps remaining in this race, so we're just going to wait and see. When they come back round, I should imagine they'll uh, come back to the line. And we shall uh, take our finger off the pause button and uh, press play and get the racing back underway. So, presumably, minus Coleman. The rider appears to be okay, but looks like he's out of contention. So, the riders making their way onto the grid in the order they were when the, the red flag came out. Just look at those clouds in the background. It's, uh, it was very bright earlier on today. Out of the window here at Lid, there are some very great threatening clouds above us and haven't yet seen any rain. So certainly for the riders' sake, let's hope it stays away for these last 10 laps. And it looks like the riders are going to be sent out on another formation lap. And I think the riders towards the back of the grid actually didn't really move from where they stopped to, uh, to the grid. So this is just going to be a case, really, of uh, getting the track, the... Uh, Temperature back in the tyres. And Reese Stevenson going very slowly there. So uh, whether he's taken the advantage, just have a bit of a sighting lap, look at lines possibly for when the race gets back underway. So wherever the concerns were about that incident on the first chicane, it appears that it's okay. Same the, uh, the rider himself. Certainly not injured. We saw him pick the bike up and push it away, but... Um, we were wondering at first whether there was any um, any oil or fluids on the track after that chicane, but it appears not because the marshals haven't been out on the track. They'd normally be straight on there if a bike had dropped fluids, but it doesn't appear to be the case.
So I'm not entirely sure why the red flag came out in the end there, whether it was uh, perhaps just a concern for the rider before he got the bike picked up, maybe, I don't know. He was in a very fast part of the track, but in any case, the racing gets back underway. Ten laps to go in the minibike, 140 final, and Will Lathrope, oh, losing out there to uh, Ben Lord as Ree Stevens gets another brilliant start. Got away very well there, the one, two, three. But crucially here, Ben Lord, it looks like, has gone through to second place as Lathrop has a look down the inside. Richard Holmes Williams right in there as well. And just being told there is no rain on the track at the moment. It is a dry track, so good conditions for these last 10 laps as Reese Stevenson leads them down the back straight, heading towards the hairpin for the first time in the remaining 10 laps of this Simoto's mini bike 140 final. Round the final corner they go. So it is. Stevenson leading, Lord in second, Lathrop third. Holmes Williams and Med, Mick Lord in sixth position, Hardman Clark. King in ninth place, and Tom Stanford rounding up the top ten. Dan Merrin, Chris Edwards, Rob Obren, Mark James Cockfield, and Ian Blatch for taking us down to 15th place. And the rest of the remaining riders, Tony Reveley, Ian Stanford, Jamie Merchant, Charlie Denton, and Stephen Blatchford rounding out what is now a 20 rider field with nine laps to go. So Reese Stevenson getting a good start there, pulling away from the rest of his rivals. I don't know if he knows there's a battle on behind him for second place. This could be good news for Stevenson. If these three riders start battling for second place, this could allow him to break away. And Reese Stevenson immediately getting out there and setting a quick lap time, 43.008, as he tries to break away from the rest of the field. Will Lathrop second, Lord in third, and Richard Holmes Williams, like Dervalane mentioned earlier, that bike does seem to run on the rich side a lot of smoke coming from the exhaust there so uh, I've been told that that's nothing to worry about it's just the way the bike's set up and certainly when you look at the pace of Richard Holmes Williams in fourth place I don't think there is any kind of mechanical issue it is evidently just the the bike setup that smoke from the from the exhaust so uh, made in fifth sixth position for Mick Lord Hardman still seventh Holmes Williams now clear in third as Will Lathrop 1.3 seconds of drift. He's now got through into second as Lord just dropping a bit of a pace there. Goes down to fourth position. 1.3 seconds the gap between first and second place with seven laps to go. No real change apart from that amongst leaders as Rob Overend a bit further down the midfield drops a couple of places. And Charlie Denton at the back of the field setting his own best lap of the race, 49.969. So pretty quick pace here in the 140 final. Richard Holmes Williams starting to put the pressure back on Will Lathrop for second place. Stevenson brings the gap up to 1.7 seconds. Another fastest lap of the race for Rhys Stevenson, 42.817 last time round. And Will Lathrop holds on to that second place. Coming on to some real pressure now, though, from Richard Holmes Williams. Lathrop has got the line, though, into the top corner. Holmes Williams in third place, really keeping that pressure on. They're breaking away now from Ben Lord. Down towards the final few corners they go, and Reese Stevenson leads the race by 1.7 seconds. Into the hairpin they go once again. Stevenson over the line. And there he goes. But all the action is for second place. The gap goes up slightly to 1.9 seconds. Will Lathrop at the moment can't do anything about the race leader. All his attention is on the rider behind him. Richard Holmes Williams in third, number 126. Oh, nice move out of the chicane there, but he's not got the line into the hairpin. Richard Holmes Williams round the outside. He's going to try and switch back down the back straight towards the chicane. And Lathrop holds on to that second place. But Richard Holmes Williams just trying to suss him out here through the chicane. They go that sweeping section down the back straight towards the hairpin in the final corner. So Stevenson around the final corner. One rider looking to retire from the race by the looks of things may possibly be Charlie Denton. Lathrop second, Holmes Williams third. Still as you were in the top ten. Ben Lord fourth from Michael Med. Mick Lord in sixth place. Stuart Hardman and Ryan Clark in eighth. Bobby King over the line in ninth as Dan Merrin on the treble eight moving into the top ten getting past Tom Stanford. Chris Edwards, Mark James Cockfield and Ian Blatchard a bit further behind. 
as again Richard Holmes Williams trying to find a way through through the chicane once again on that back section real uh, series of long sweeping chicanes on that part of the track as the leaders start to close up on the tail enders with three laps to go so Stephen Blatchford the rider in 19th place about to be lapped by the race leader Reese Stevenson and Stevenson has got a 2.3 second advantage luckily for Will Lathrop he should be closing up on the slower rider just as they leave the chicane snatching the corner down the inside into the hairpin as Blatchford in 19th place concedes the corner lets those leading group of riders go ahead Stevenson 2.3 seconds ahead Lathrop still second Richard Holmes Williams in third down to the final hairpin they go there'll be two more laps to go at the end of this one here they come around the final corner Stevenson closing in on I believe that'll be Jamie Merchant there he goes the number 40 in 18th place so Merchant goes a lap down Stevenson holds on to the lead by 1.4 seconds and Merchant coming into the chicane now oh this is gonna be bad news here for Stevenson getting bulked now Merchant with nowhere to go, he's just got to hold his line. And this could be good news for Holmes Williams having a peek down the inside into the hairpin. Doesn't quite make the move. Richard Holmes Williams, 1 2 6 in third place, just trying to sneak down the inside there. As Reese Stevenson on the 1 2 3 makes his way down towards the hairpin once again. This will be the penultimate time. Last lap board is about to go out for Reese Stevenson. There he goes over the line. The gap remains pretty decent for him. 2.3 seconds now. Will Lathrop second, but Richard Holmes Williams right on his tail in third. And of course, a bit of bad luck there for um, Lathrop on the previous lap. He got bulked slightly behind Merchant in 18th place, who had nowhere to go really, just had to hold his line. And that allows Holmes Williams to have a real go going on to this final lap. Clear track in front of them. Reese Stevenson down towards the final few corners as Richard Holmes Williams having one last look through the chicane. He's got to keep on the rear wheel as they make their way down towards the hairpin for the final time. We're going to see Reese Stevenson in just a few moments take the chequered flag. Round the final corner he goes, and Reese Stevenson is your race winner. Side by side over the line for second place, and Will Lathrop takes second position by one tenth of a second from Richard Holmes Williams in third it's gonna be Ben Lord in fourth place Mick Lord in fifth Michael Med over the line in sixth place and fastest lap or personal fastest lap of the race for Stuart Hardman in seventh place from Ryan Clark Bobby King stays just ahead of Dan Merritt for tenth place Tom Stanford the 101 in 11th position 12 for the number 63 of Chris Edwards Mark James Cockfield coming round the final corner any moment now to finish in 13th place and the last few riders on the lead lap it's Tony Reveley, Ian Blatchford, Ian Stanford in 16th place, Rob Overend just about staying on the lead lap will finish in 18th place Stephen Blatchford and Charlie Denton finishing 19th and 20th one lap down so Reese Stevenson another great day for him taking another Moto victory to round out the penultimate round of the championship. Great battle there for second place between Will Lathrop and Richard Holmes Williams. And a great way to round off this penultimate round of the Rich Energy British Mini Bikes Championship down here at Lid in Kent. It's been a great afternoon's racing. Relatively a few incidents on the track in terms of medical assistance, which is always great to see. But a, a big shout out and a big word of thanks to all of the marshals, the medics. The track crew here at Lid, the event officials from uh, Rich Energy, uh, Rich Mini Bikes Championship, everyone who has played a part in bringing this meeting to you. This has been an Alpha Life production, and thanks to all the, the camera crews and everybody behind the scenes at Alpha Life for all their hard work.